So welcome to Challenge the Road. Thank you for all your comments on the previous Land Rover videos, but we've got to talk about EVs and why they are falling so far in value. But I want to go back to the beginning and go through everything that's happened. So COVID struck, 2020, terrible time for everyone, lockdowns, all this happened to the country and all around the world, terrible, terrible time. And we ended up with a shortage of supply of components, stimulus from governments, all these things were going on. And basically, shortly after that, the government decided we're going to stop petrol and diesel vehicles being sold in the UK in 2030. Now, manufacturers had to go with that. I'm not sure they would have, but they did, and they've tried to do that. So we need to get up to date, and we need to think, right, what's happening? So what I've got for you, at the end of the video, I'm gonna have five of the most depreciating EVs, and it is shocking. It's not good. But I'm gonna talk about how we get there, what's happening now, and some of the articles that I've found. So we buy it with emotion, don't we? We want to be greener, we want to help the planet. So we all think, right, we're going to get EVs. Then everyone thought about, well, how is this going to work? And I've done videos in the past. I've tried mild hybrid. I've tried plug-in hybrid. I've tried full electric. And at the moment, I'm in a diesel van. So, and I'm quite happy actually, but that's another video. But we've got to go through what's making these cars depreciate so much. And I've got something for you here. This is the latest iPhone here, okay? Now, this charges about 50% in sort of 20 minutes. It's all got fast charging, probably an hour, and it's fully charged. EVs, okay? Now, if I was to say to you, right, what you can do, I'm going to sell you this phone now, but it's going to charge in eight hours, and it's going to take four hours to get to 50%. You're going to go, I don't really want to do that, Richard. Why do I want to... Why do I want to go backwards? You've just got this phone 15 minutes, hour to charge. That's like looking at fuel. Go to a petrol station, you go in, 15 minutes later, you're filled up, got your coffee or whatever, snacks, like I would, and you're out. Now you're looking at how long is the car going to take to charge? Now, I'm not going to talk about Tesla today because that's going to be another video, but the EV world other than Tesla is actually quite slow and it's not good. There's other videos I've done of where I've been out, there isn't a good charging network, the speed is poor. So you imagine you're gonna to go to the latest iPhone, but the charging's gonna be terrible, and that's where you are. And you know that's just fact. You look at it, a seven kilowatt charger on a 80 kilowatt car, you can do the maths, it's, you know, it takes a long time, and that's a good home fast charger. You've got the other problem is, if you're in a flat, machines on site, you might not have access to chargers. So for me, I thought, this is not good, this is not good. The other thing was, and I don't think people realize this, especially company owners, they come out with an incentive that said, when you buy an EV car, you can depreciate it 100% in the first year off your corporation tax bill. A lot of people went out, didn't they? Gonna get the latest Porsche Taycan, whatever. I'm gonna get 19% off my tax bill, lovely jubbly. I've saved, let's just say 20 grand on that car. Well, I don't think everyone read the small print. And if you didn't, you're gonna be in for a bit of a shock. When you sell the car, you've got to give the corporation tax back at the rate at the time. The rate at the moment's 25%. So what you're seeing is, I don't think people really realized it, and now they're thinking, I wanna get out the car, but now I've got to give the tax back. And that's where I think it's gonna give us this problem with depreciation. The next thing I found was these EV graveyards of cars, and this is across a lot of manufacturers. I'll bring up some stuff now. There's stuff here in China, huge amounts of EVs. I mean, I'm talking thousands, like just, you know, airstrips taken up with cars, that many. So you know, here, look, a uh, major EV company goes bankrupt despite being backed by a wealthy tech giant blaming lack of customer demand. The demand isn't there because I don't think it works. It, it does in some circumstances, but I couldn't get on with it and I think it's too slow. And that thing about the phone, I think I'm exactly right. I don't know what you think, but that's how it seems. So this here, WM Motors made losses of over 1 billion in three years despite major backing. 
here. Ford expects to, to bleed 4.5 billion on electric cars this year, losing $36,000 every sale. You can't carry on like that, you can't. Now, I don't think it's the manufacturer's fault because they've been forced into it. So it's nothing wrong with that. It's just that the technology has got to be right for us or we're not going to buy it. That's the way I see it. And why would you? Um, now, I actually love electric cars to drive. I think they're great when they're working and if they could charge faster. Now here, Toyota cuts 2023 EV sales forecast by 40% um, in latest questionable strategy shift. They're going to look at going back to PEV cars, um, plug-in hybrids. Toyota raises HEVs, lowers EV sales. Again, there's nothing wrong with hybrid. Just stick with hybrid. Or even just hybrid with no charger. That, that should, I don't know who does this, but stupid, stupid. Um, so, I mean, there's just loads here. I'll put them up. Um, worries about lithium. China controls 70% of lithium. That's giving other worlds a bit of a worry. So that's where we are. And then what I thought was, I'm going to pick five cars that are in different segments that may interest you that have depreciated so much you won't believe. So let's go through the cars. Got them here on my laptop. We go through them. So I thought about a small city car that you can buzz about in. And I thought about the Fiat 500e. I haven't driven one, haven't reviewed one. So I don't know what they're like, but I've heard it's an excellent car. Now, let's just go on Auto Trader while we're here and just have a look. Because all I want to give you is facts. Now, this car is 87 kilo, uh, sorry, 42 kilowatt even though it's called 87, doesn't make sense. Um, auto, I think this is over 150 miles range, so it's not too bad. I'll bring it up on the screen, probably be easier. Now, I know these are 32,000 new. This has done 3,879 miles and is a 2023 model this year. 17,289 pounds. So that has lost 15,000 in a year if you'd bought that new. It's just crazy. The next one I've got for you, Renault Zoe. I actually quite like this car. Great first car, I think. And these type of prices, I'm looking here at a 2021 with 27,000 miles, 52 kilowatt. So good, good range, a couple of hundred miles, under 10,000 pounds. It's lost 20,000 pounds in two years. Is that a bargain? And the other thing I'm looking at, every time I'm looking at all these figures, and I look at them every day on all sorts of cars, I'm thinking, where's the bottom? Where do I come in? Where do I feel like 10 grand is a great buy? I think it probably is. Is it going to be worth five grand? Maybe. But is it becoming like a phone anyway? Is it disposable? Do you think, you know, Apple phones after five years really don't have any life because of software and stuff? Is it like that with EVs? I think it might be. The next car I've got is the one, if I was looking at a saloon and I want to have four doors, I put this in Polestar. I think this is a great buy, um, but not recommending anything for you. This is not car buying advice. This is just what I'm thinking. Now, Polestar 2, I've got a retail price of 44,000 without options. 64 kilowatt, really, really good range. I think this range is like 280 miles. Now this is a 2022, so one year old, 25,000 miles, nice mileage, 24,690. 20,000 pounds off the first year. That is crazy, that is such a good car. But I don't know if that's the bottom with these. I think they maybe got a bit more to run. So as I say, it's not buying advice, it's just what I'm seeing in my mind. The next one is a car that I drove and I wanted to buy and I didn't and I'm glad I didn't. Now. When Audi come out with stuff, it's normally really good, and I really do like Audis, and I'm gonna find the Audi e-tron for you, because I've found here. Now, I went in an e-tron, took it for a test drive, quite liked it, I thought it was a bit big, and I thought the range wasn't quite enough, but it was sort of Audi's first time out into stuff. Now, I've got here, let's have a look. So, this is a 20, let's find one here. So, 2021, you can get a 43,000 mile car for 25,000. Good, good, isn't it? 72,000 new. 72,000 new. So we're looking at, and, this, and it gets worse. If I go back one more year, I can get these for 20,000 pounds. 
So 52,000 depreciation in three years on an Audi e-tron. That is a bargain. And, but it, again, I'm thinking, where's the bottom on this? Where's the bottom? Is it 10 grand? Or is this the bottom? I'm not sure it is the bottom, but it, it can't be far away. I mean, it can't lose another, well, it can't lose another 52,000. I mean, they'd be giving us 30 back. So, right, next one I've got for you. And this was a car, remember the adverts, Andy Murray? Jaguar, I-Pace, good car that. 70,000 pounds new. 2021 models here, that's a fine one. X Demonstrator, 2021 model, 21,000 miles, 28,000. 28,000. This was 70,000 pound car. This is crazy. 42,000 depreciation. So, when I mean, I've been trying to do this video for a while. The problem's been is that every time I went to do it, the cars kept going down, and I kept thinking, hmm. I wonder where the bottom is. And I thought, well, I want to put the video out, but God knows what's going to happen in January. Now, I think a lot of this is people getting this corporation tax rule wrong. I think that they thought they'd just go and buy an EV, 80 grand or whatever, and save the 20% and they're going to get caught out. Now, Porsche, I'm going to go here and I'm going to go with the one I really wanted. So I wanted a Porsche takeover. I actually put an order with Porsche and I pulled it. Because originally, I think they said it was £70,000, and the price just kept going up and up and up, and I thought, no, I'm not paying 100000 for this, no, no way, it's not a 911. Right, so let me just reset this. So I'm going to go Porsche, and we're going to go 4S, I think it's a Cross Turismo, let me just find it, here we go. So 4S, and I know how much these are, because I've spec them before, so... Let's go to estate, because I think the estate looks fantastic. I don't know what you guys think, but I think it looks, looks really cool. Right, here we go. Now, I know this car, I actually wrote it down here, 112,000 roughly new with all these options. It's a 2022 model. It's done 12,000 miles, 70K. 70, 42,000 depreciation in a year, but it gets better. I found another one. 66,000 pounds for a 2021. These cars are losing a fortune. You used to buy Porsches and not lose a huge amount of money. And I love the Porsches. I had the McCanns, I had the KNs. I wasn't paying 110,000 for them. Jeez. So yeah, so you know, I hope you enjoy these videos. I've actually got quite a lot coming out over Christmas. So obviously just do a lot of research and a lot of thinking. Don't really share it with anyone else but you guys. Um, but I've got some ideas on what I would buy and maybe, maybe sort of a bit of um, a guide to sort of mild hybrids, PEVs, electric vehicles, what I would buy and what I feel are near maybe the bottom that you should buy into. So please like and subscribe if you can. And uh, yeah, please add a comment. I'll try and get back to you. Hope you enjoy these videos. Hope they help you. And I'll see you again soon.